Do you think that you can be in a relationship with someone who's just maybe this lifetime for them is not about self-awareness? You know, I think that it's like two parts. One is if you are desiring your partner to take a journey, take it first and be the embodied reflection of that. So when you are, when you are having these visceral shifts and changes, they get curious and want to, and, and without like nagging or being like, you need to do this, but inviting them into that. And then, you know, to be completely honest, if they don't want to go down that journey and that's what you're wanting, it's likely not the right person for you because really for, for Johan and I, like the basis, the foundation of our relationship is our practice. Mm. We've been doing that from the first moment that we met and it is our emotional touchstone through literally everything. And we are so devoted to expansion and that's what keeps it so exciting and Mm. so passion filled and so exhilarating. Mm. It is never boring. I have never been bored. Hi, I'm Sahara Rose, and welcome to the Highest Self Podcast, a place where we discuss what makes you your soul's highest involvement. This podcast was created seven years ago because I wanted to have deep spiritual conversations that were also grounded, modern, fun, real, relatable, juicy, sexy, and what I love about this podcast is I get to talk with some of my closest friends, my biggest teachers, people who have really inspired me and made a difference in my life and bring them to you on the podcast. And today's episode is one of those. So Rachel and Johan have been my dear friends for many years now, and I've gotten to know both of them individually. And they're a married couple who has devoted their life to helping couples have more intimate, juicy, but also really rich and meaningful relationships that value integrity, conversation, and diving into the shadows and depths that most of us don't go into in relationship because we're so afraid of the abandonment that might happen on the other side. So in this conversation, we really go in, in their personal story of how their marriage almost ended because of a situation that they'll go into in this episode. I don't want to ruin it for you, but a lot of you are going to relate because I pulled on my Instagram story, how many of you guys are experiencing a heartbreak right now? And 70% of you said yes. So I feel there has been a huge shift in the collective in the past few months, especially since November or so of last year of a lot of couples separating, divorcing, myself included in December. And you know, it's really a renaissance, I believe, of relationships because the old models are not working for us anymore. You know, in California, the the rate of divorce is 70% as well. So marriage in the way that we've known it before as a construct of you and I together forever without really talking about what that means is failing us. So how do we as spiritual people that are constantly evolving and changing and growing and diving deeper into ourselves and wanting to live in full truth and expression and freedom and liberation, but also have a partner to move through these stages of life with How do we stay in relationship? And that is what today's episode is all about. So we really go into their relationship as an example. And I ask the questions that I have that I know you're going to have as well of how did you navigate through that? How did you know you were meant to stay together? What do you do if your partner is not on a spiritual journey? And what do you see for yourselves in relationship moving forward with all of the shifts that are happening in the world? So this is one you're definitely going to want to re-listen to. And without further ado, let's welcome Rachel and Johan on the Highest Self Podcast. So likely you are that friend that people come to whenever they have a problem. Maybe you love holding space for people, asking really juicy conversations and actively listening to their answers. So you know that there is a career path out there for you, something around the realms of spirituality and coaching, but you don't really know what that looks like. So I have actually created a quiz on what type of spiritual life coach are you? Are you the intuitive, transformational, or empathetic coach? So you can head over to the show notes to take that quiz right now. And I actually show you how to make that your career in my school, the Dharma Coaching Institute. So head over to the show notes to take the quiz, learn more about what type of coach you are, and then actually take action on making this your career path this year. Mm 
Welcome, Rachel and Johan, to the Highest Self Podcast. I am so excited to have you here today. We've spent so many hours diving into relationships and these really deep conversations. So before we get into all of that, I'd love to ask you, Rachel, what makes you your highest self? Uh, The first thing that comes to mind is my willingness to meet the depths of my shadow. Yeah, and that journey. (laughs) I would say similarly, my, uh, a willingness to, to die a death of what is no longer serving me mm-hmm. and to be in discovery of what is. And also for me, a big one really was realizing that God is a woman. Mm-hmm. You believe God is a woman. <laughs> now I yeah. feel it after midnight. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that for a lot of, lot of folks out there, that's going to really... Um, rub you in in an interesting way, you know, and it certainly did me. And it's, it's that interesting edge again of, of this idea that, you know, God is white dude with a beard was angry and broke and, you know, but also loves you. Um, (laughs) and, um, and that's such a big thing for folks to really understand that God or the divine is goddess is so much more than what we've thought or, you know, have, have given ourselves opportunity to sort of get curious about. And when we do, the magic is just endless. 100% agreed. And it's interesting you both mentioned shadow and death because those have been the biggest teachers in my path as well, especially the past few months navigating the divorce portal, which you guys have been incredible support systems through. So you guys aren't your average couple. You've been together for 10 years, which in the spiritual community, I would say is like a hundred years. I think like one year is actually like 10 years when you're both on a growth journey because you change and you die so much and to keep growing and elevating together. So 10 years together, you're married. And I was reading your post that you feel more intimate than ever before, more connected, sexier than ever before. And those of you who aren't watching on video, I recommend watching this on video because y'all, they're the fuck hottest couple like both of them on their own like 10 on 10 but together it's a whole other level so please Ooh. go on spotify and youtube <laughs> Thank just you. witness the magic <laughs> and it's so beautiful to see because you guys are willing to go places that no couple i know would go and continue to meet each other there and meet each other there and choose each other again and again so can you please share the story of your relationship and how you got to this place? You know, the first thing that comes to mind, and this happened very early on in our relationship, was exactly that. And actually it was Johan who brought it to the table, which was, you know, I he was like, I don't want a normal relationship. I don't want um, this traditional idea of what relationship or marriage looks like. And he really made the the bold statement of saying, I want to, I want us to choose this every day. And that's the basis of our relationship. And I think in that choosing, it's sort of like faced us directly with what's needed in order to choose that boldly over and over again. And the fact that we're both like deeply growth mindset human beings, but it, it it's been a, it's been a wild wild ride. But we're both completely committed and devoted to that in our own path separately, and it's one of the reasons why we get along so well because we both have that at the forefront of our desire for this type of life. Yeah, to what Rachel said, you know, most folks don't realize that we're all running a program Mm -hmm. or we all have a program of what we think a relationship is and isn't who we are and aren't. And so, and it's modeled off of something, right? So we're modeling our, our parents or friends or culture or religion. And we don't necessarily know or aware of that we can create our own program. And from the beginning, we, you know, and again, we all, we, each of us came in with our own program. Yeah. And, um, and we were like, why don't we just be in discovery of what, we, what it would look like if we created our own program, mm-hmm. which we have. And, you know, for all of our clients and our students, we say the same. It's like, guys, you get to make your own OS. Like mm-hmm. you decide mm-hmm. what feels good, how you want to grow, where the boundaries are, how you want to explore all this. When we try to fit into a, a, a box that somebody else has created, or our perspective and or understanding of that box, it's so limiting. And so our willingness and certainly uh, continued commitment to, like I said earlier, to die a death often of those beliefs, of those patterns, because 
nothing in the universe is static. Yeah. And when we disassociate with, oh, well, this is what a marriage looks like and doesn't look like, right? You certainly don't do this and this, and you have to do that and that. And you take all that away and say, what's most, how can we create the most amount of aliveness and safety and connection intimacy. and sensuality and intimacy mm -hmm. right here? And when that's the OS, that's what you operate out of, it's infinitely exciting. enlivening and exciting. Yeah. And you will come up against, you know, often the opportunity to transform. So what I noticed happened for myself, and I think for a lot of people, when you enter into a relationship, you so badly want to please the other person mm -hmm. that you end up just kind of agreeing with things for the sake of keeping the relationship because you're so afraid of that fear of abandonment of what if I say, I want the relationship to be like this. And they're like, no. And then you like lose this beautiful spark. And it's that, you know, that honeymoon oxytocin stage. You're like anything to keep this going. Mm -hmm. So first of all, when did you bring up having your own agreements in the relationship and what did that cause? conversation look like? It was very, like very early on, like from the very beginning, you know, Johan was very like expressed in not wanting a traditional, he'd also been married before. And I had, Johan was my first real relationship. You know, I had I dated maybe someone for six months, but before that it was like fleeting. And I definitely had that program. I came in with that. And I'm grateful for it because it it allowed me to have that journey of like people pleaser into this level of like deeply empowered. Um, I think that he was there much earlier than I was. It took me a couple of years to get to the place of being able to say what I really wanted, but I was still like bold. I was the first one who said, I love you, who asked to move in. You know, I'm, I'm the type of person that believes in going after what we want. You know, I'm, I'm a big personality. I'm an intense person. I want people to know that right from the beginning so that they can know what they're getting into versus like the playing of the game. So it worked always, but then like four years in is when we really started redefining, um, like the, the deep gunk stuff and like reprogramming together. Yeah, um, man, there's so much to cover <laughs> and to go back. And I, I keep remembering iterations of ourselves and who we were. And, you know, for me, having been married before, freedom was such a huge thing, right? Yeah. And um, so from the very beginning, I was very honest with Rachel. And I was like, listen, I do not want to do the, the, the dance that most people are doing. And I was like, the, you know, divorce rates are crazy. They're over 70%. And why is that? Mm. If it's this thing that everybody thinks that they want, you know, and the way that it's set up and to what you said, Sahara, it's like, you know, we, we oftentimes don't have the conversations yeah. that are the breakthrough dying of death conversations because we're so afraid to uh, lose the connection yeah. and, and it'll destroy this image of who we are projecting or, you know, oftentimes it's this PR person that we're pretending to be yeah. versus sharing our deepest, darkest fears and secrets. And, and this is again, where, uh, conscious communication and what we call uh, co-devotional communication comes in. How can I speak to it? so that it doesn't fester because when it festers and it's living inside of you and you don't say it, you're like on this automatic thing of thinking of this is how it's supposed to go, yet a big, huge part of you is not expressed. And even if that thing is seemingly small and tiny, it holds so much yeah. power and it weighs way more than all this like airy fluff, you know, and this, it literally like will derail your direction and your ship and like sink your ship. And then you wonder like why people cheat or why people, you know, uh, aren't being honest or fully forthcoming. And, and it's like, how can you have that conversation in the moment when it arises or shortly after? And through that, create trust and intimacy and connection. Without that, I think it's sadly all doomed to fail. And, and for us, we didn't have the hard, hard conversations till four years in when- Which was after we were engaged. Yeah, and, <laughs> and oftentimes that's, that's usually when it happens. Yeah. For a lot of our clients, at least, yeah. it's like you commit and you're like, all right, we're engaged or we're married. And that's when they're it's like, ta-da, here's Pandora's all the box stuff. Is like, ah! <laughs> you know, and so it's in a way like by design. Mm. And uh, for us, it took some major, major upheavals 
falling in love with other people, you know, getting intimate with other people, allowing us just to be fully, fully confused. And through that being fully, fully expressed. Um, and it was in a way like we'd had the breakup conversation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, but we decided to, to stay together. So I want to go into what happened in this four or five year mark, because we've had conversations around a lot of people in our shared community, spiritual community, I think globally are separating, divorcing, breaking up right now. And, you know, they say oftentimes in a relationship, the test is if, you know, one or both people fall in love or, you know, with someone else and infidelity is a, is a huge, I don't, I issue, but also I'm like questioning monogamy and I'm questioning marriage and I'm questioning these, these constructs as well. So I'm curious if you guys would like to share a little bit about the situation and the new agreements that you created as a result of it. Yeah, it was, you know, Johan went away to shoot a movie and fell in love with his co-star and, you know, sort of me being the scorpionic human that I am, like now I, I know what a pivotal role I played in that because that gave me the permission to also then therefore open up and have my own experience with um, another married couple. And it was just this this massive explosion into um, like what was in the underbelly the entire time. And I think that we, we stuck through it in such a, like when I think back on how we navigated that, I'm like so in awe of how we did it because it was so devastating, especially because we had just gotten engaged. Um, and it, especially because boundaries and agreements were broken, you know, there were moments when both of us did that. And it's almost like we needed to, to do that in order to shake up our entire world, our known universe, and, and therefore speak to what was shook up. And I think even more so the thing I, I continuously get interested with is like, is why, why did we do that? What, what, what was the impetus behind it? And that I get so curious about, and that just led us into like this, this depth of conversation, how we weren't feeling met into exactly what you just said, like playing these roles of just trying to please each other mm -hmm. and trying to keep in the sweet pocket of like, I'm going to do anything I can to, to stay connected. And for both of us to feel what it was like to not be connected. I mean, I, for me, like it was such an exhilarating moment of like, who am I outside of this relationship? And I'm so grateful. And it was like this surgeon of sexuality, of sensuality. And then from that space, I still wanted to be with him um, and vice versa. And it led us down this like really freaking crazy, interesting path where we had to really like hold each other as we both died. And like both of us died multiple times. And the fact that we did it with such grace and with such love because we weren't focused on what happened, we, we focused on why it happened. Mm. Beautifully said, my love. And, and, you know, we went there. Yeah. Like we both went there, you know, <laughs> went all the way to the other side. And, you know, and I, I want to bring attention to the, the beauty when you look at it from the macro perspective, which mm -hmm. is you can't have uh, expansion without contraction. And I think a lot of the stories that we're, we're told about marriage and being in, you know, sacred partnership or just in married, you know, we see in the movies, it's like you ride off to the, you know, into the sunset yeah. and it's white picket happily fences, ever happily, happily ever mm -hmm. after, nothing ever happens. You're just <laughs> death happy. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's that narrative is so deep. And so when contractions do inevitably happen, we, we misdiagnose them. Yeah. We go like, Ooh, this is not supposed to be there's something wrong with me yeah. or my partnership or my partner or with life instead of, wow, this is an opportunity for me to face some darkness or, you know, some, some of my blind spots, some of the things that are in the sphere that I haven't spoken to acknowledged. And when we change the narrative, the perspective on yeah. it, it becomes this empowering experience. And again, we didn't know any of, of this when we went through it. Yeah. And so I really like want to honor us for still being able to make it through it. Yes. But that's what got us really curious about how could we do it? Because we knew it's going to happen again. Right? Mm. Contraction will, yeah, will inevitably happen again. appear. Yeah. And so how can we go about it with more grace? 
And that's what's gotten us really interested in the science of that and learning to, to welcome the contraction, mm -hmm. to celebrate the contraction, even in the midst of the craziest of the contractions to infuse in breath and awareness mm -hmm. and gratitude, knowing that this will lead us into the most beautiful expansion we couldn't even dream of before. You know, and also the awareness too that like, I believe that if one person in a partnership is feeling contracted, the other one is, is as well. And so it's like bringing in, you know, perhaps Johan's story at that time was, I feel unsatisfied. I was also unsatisfied, mm. right? And so that is, it's like really asking us to get honest because oftentimes in our society, we, like, we want to put ourselves in a disempowered state or a victim state, like this happened to me, but we are in partnership. We're playing this dance. And when we can really take that, it doesn't mean everyone has to stay together. That's not, it's just, it's knowing that you are playing your part. And that's so much more empowering in that to decide like, oh, that if I can create that, then I can create something different. Mm. And we're constantly initiating each other, yeah. you know, into hopefully further and further iterations of, of opening and discovery. And, um, and to what Rachel said, you know, our, our philosophy throughout it all was if we're not meant to be together, uh, then this, we're so grateful that we chose each other for this initiation yeah. into better versions of ourselves and mm -hmm. really res respecting each other and honoring each other for having the willingness and having the courage to speak our deepest, darkest, like yeah. most scary truths to each other. And then when we, when you do that, the freedom that follows, the attraction that follows, the connection, the passion that follows is insane. Mm -hmm. All the aliveness that you thought you needed to look for outside of the relationship is all of a sudden in the relationship. Yeah. Because you've said that un unspeakable, crazy thing, you know, and for, you know, if we want to get more specific, you know, for me specifically at the time in the beginning was like, I was saying, and what, what I was feeling was that Rachel was like the safe girl, mm -hmm. you know, she was this rosy colored glasses, safe girl, people pleasing girl. And I was like, that's not what I want. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, this version of Rachel, who is just today is badass fucking powerful, fearless, fully, you know, sensually, sexually embodied version of herself, right? And in order to get there, the, the rupture was necessary. And for yeah. me to become a trustable man yeah. and be able to, you know, talk about my, my infidelity, my, you know, fears and desires, um, I needed also for the rupture to be so huge that I had like nothing else to lose. And again, oftentimes this is when people go separate ways right? Instead of going, this is, ha this happened for us. And especially in retrospect, we're like, wow, we cast the people so perfectly. Oh my gosh. You know, <laughs> everyone was exactly, the stakes needed to be so high for us to be able to be like, okay, I'm gonna, there's no other, there's, the ledge is so tiny. I have to jump, mm. you know, and we did. And, mm -hmm. and here we are. Oh, full body resonance with everything you just shared. And you know, I think that sometimes it takes that being on the very cusp of the edge of just like, okay, we're either doing this and bearing our whole hearts or bust because it's like, you just can't go back into contraction after something like that. Yeah. You yeah. just, and it's funny because we think by being that perfect trophy versions of ourselves, which was one of the programmings I realized I had running of mm -hmm. like, because my dad was very narcissistic. So I learned how to appeal to narcissistic men and be like the perfect girl, perfect yeah. wife, perfect everything. But then you're not, at, you think you're going to get more intimacy that way, but you're actually con, re, uh, like releasing yourself from that. It's yeah. from saying the scary thing that you're either going to like lean all the way in together, or it's like, okay, this truth is something that I can't be with. And at least you're honest with it. Yeah. Yeah. So what made you guys choose to stay together? What was that decision-making process like? Because a lot of people, that's that's the big question. Yeah, I want, I want to speak to that too. I want to, before we go into it is, this was also not like, uh, like, wow, we choose each other now. It was a oh long process. Oh my gosh, it was process. so long. So it was I just want to process. reiterate, you know, folks that are listening, you're like, oh, you just do this. And then it's like, it, it's all fixed and, and it's all done. No, this is like years in the making yeah. of, of choosing each other yeah. and making sure that this is what we actually want to do. Yeah. You know, you know. And, and also, you know, 
like the skill set we had then is definitely not what we have now. And I really want to honor both of us because even in the midst of that, we handled it so beautifully. And and that's part of like our design. We've never been, you know, we've never called each other names. We've never yelled at each other. That's never, it's n- n- you've yelled at me a couple of times. I have. I've yelled at him like a handful of times when it was necessary. He's never yelled at me in 10 years. Like, so we handled it so well. And in the midst of it, we held each other while like he flailed and was like, I want to be with this other woman. I want to be with both of you. And I was like, I'm here for all of it. And then when I flailed and was in love with this, you know, other person, he was like, I'm here for it. And so it was, it was like so beautiful to experience the depth at which, oh, it makes me so emotional. Like, because we're both seekers and we are on the paths that, that we're, that we're chosen to be on, even the, in the devastation, we, we still wanted to be there for each other. And like, I re- I'll remember this very specific moment when we were on the couch and I was like laying in his arms and I was so angry at him. I was so angry. And at the same time, there was like this visceral feeling in me that I was home. And, and it was like, I think the most important thing to recognize for me in my view of him was like, I knew that he was running a program and a trauma. And this was where it came from. And it wasn't like, you know, some, he wasn't trying to do this out of malice. Like, you know, it, it didn't happen over and over again. It happened two times. And it was like, he brought it to the surface and I was like, oh, this is, this is the point at which I help him heal. Mm. Like, this is that moment. And he keeps showing up. And that's Mm. how our relationship has always been is like, even no matter what's come up when it's been super challenging, both of us have have always had the willingness to choose to keep going and it's mm. been consistent. And so it's like, there was that mm. I, I could, even though I was broken, still somewhat feel held. And also we didn't, we didn't ever grip each other. You know, yeah. our, our story was like, if there is another person that is more right for you than I am, I celebrate that. And I honor that. And I, I, I would set you free. Yeah. Right. So there wasn't this thing of, of, even though we, we, you know, at the time, like Rachel still wanted to explore an open container. I felt unsafe. I, I asked to close the container to be monogamous. Um, and um, even though, you know, I would say that in some ways that the emotional container wasn't closed for some years because <laughs> she still felt like she needed that as a backup plan, as a safety plan in some mm-hmm. ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew that that was part of, my uh, opportunity to hold her to make her feel safe yeah. that I actually do choose her yeah. and that, um, you know, and, and if I wasn't that guy for her, then I would, would have celebrated releasing you back into the wild, you know, because we love each other so much. And through that experience at four years, we, what was brought or what was created was such massive respect yes. for each other and the way that we got to hold each other through that death portal and rebirth portal, that the respect is, is such that, and we, I, I think we still have that, you know, in our, in our field, that Absolutely. same belief. However, we very strongly believe that we're designed for each other, like literally made for each other yeah. because it gets better and better forever. And ever we're like, I don't see this happening with anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> It's so beautiful that you were able to alchemize such a pain, like for the feminine, that feeling of feeling like unchosen yeah. and unimportant and that your love of your life is in love with someone else. It's like your living nightmare. Yeah. And, and it takes a lot. I think it also takes a lot of courage to stay. Yeah. Because society tells you, oh, well, if, you know, now I follow these Instagrams about being a high value woman. This yeah. is like the term. <laughs> yeah. It's like a high value woman walks away the moment yeah. there's even a sniff of a red flag. Yeah. And yeah. it's like these, these things like that. And you're like, oh shit. Like, but then also men are healing and they're not perfect. And you wouldn't be in this container that you're in right now. And it's almost like what I notice happened a lot in breakups too, is that the woman often gets more into her sensuality. Like yes. that was the case for me. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. because it's like you needed, it's like almost like when we're in a relationship, we cut ourselves off from our sexuality. And it's like only about that person. We go into like wife mode. It's like, for some reason we're trained. It's like, okay, now we're going grocery shopping. We're doing to-do lists. We're doing this, we're doing that. And I noticed myself, I was 24 and I very quickly went into that because I was like, I want to like Seal the deal. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep and this man. Exactly. Because you have this idea of once you're married, now you're safe. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's done deal. And for me, it took the divorce to go deeper into my sensuality. And, you know, for you having having this breakup. And then often for men, it's the they're in their testosterone phase and different women. And then it takes like a beautiful, empowered woman that really meets you and potentially losing her to be like, oh my gosh, like, is this worth it? And it, you said it brought you more into being like committed and actually you then wanting to have the mm-hmm. monogamous relationship and you being like, I don't know, maybe we should be a little bit more open. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I know that some of you women out there don't want to hear this because you all have been going through it, you know, for a long, long time and sort of in this world in a way of, you know, made for men and run by men and I got to tell you, you guys are the answer. Yeah. You know, us, we're not able to see that stuff. And, you know, men are so much more, we're so much more tend to, tend to be in our heads. And the programming is so, you know, generations and generations deep. And the way that Rachel really impacted me was through my heart. Yeah. Which was so shut off and so closed off. I was not, you know, I was accessing my lower chakras, very active brain very active this was just like a dead spot like it it wasn't nothing there and it was it was her really bypassing the the intellect Uh, not i wouldn't say bypassing but not not using the intellect as a way to sort of handle the things that came up or really speak from her heart to my heart Mm. and because of it it you know, love is, I believe, what everything is made out of. Mm-hmm. So it's it's the pathway. Th- there's no, you can't block love. Yeah. And so it 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 penetrates so deeply, and her love uh, is so powerful, and that's what really got me to to feel, and to open, and to understand, and activate myself to a, a potential that I didn't even know was possible. Yeah. Truly, I had no clue. So, for you ladies out there listening even though it might be difficult, especially when you feel you've been wronged, you know, by the the masculine, please, please, if you can drop into your hearts and just do your best to love those dudes and be compassionate. That doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. That doesn't mean- No, it means you do have boundaries. Yeah, very clear boundaries. And that's what's actually being asked for is like, we need to switch the roles. And I really- to what Johan is expressing, I believe that we are the leaders and we mm. lead with love and we leave with deep, profound, embodied love. And that's what this world is seeking. That's what the men are seeking. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Like, that's what I knew in that moment. I viscerally could feel it. I was like, he, he, from a little boy, that's what this is, moment is. You don't trust the feminine mm. and you're acting out because you don't believe that I actually care about you and you don't want to open up your heart and let my love in. Because if you do, you feel like you are going to die and everything is going to end. And the belief I also had was I will be manipulated. Yeah. I will be controlled. Yeah. I will not know myself. You know, I'm I'll basically- lose myself. Yeah, I'll lose myself. I'll hand over the keys and I'll become her little bitch, you yeah. know, which is not at all, by the way, what happened. Yeah. But that was the fear that I think I'm, I, certainly I was faced with. And I think a lot of guys are like, you know, if they're talking to their bros or their, you know, fathers or whoever, they're like, yo, you can't, you can't let the woman, you know, she's going to walk you like a dog, you know, or ride you like a horse, whatever. It's this narrative, this fear we have of opening our hearts. Yeah. And, because uh, we don't want to be exposed and vulnerable. And and the thing that we're missing- Because vulnerability is weakness, which yeah. is literally the opposite of what it actually is, which is courage. And that shadow feminine yeah. of manipulation. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, you know, I, I heard this the other day and I think it's so poignant, which is, you know, why are we, if we've been hurt, why are we then therefore choosing to hurt? You know, and it's, we're recycling this energy all the time versus really stepping into leadership, which is to what Johan expressed, like it means boundaries, but it means calling each other forward with love, with consciousness, with devotion. And I, and the, the moments that we did that are such 
profound pivotal moments that I hold in my blueprint that when I think about that, I'm like, fuck, that is the most powerful version of me, which is I'm not going to listen to your illusion. I'm not going to buy into your fear and your trauma. I'm going to choose here and show you what real love is. Mm. And, and I'm going to let go of the story, which is I'm not good enough or I'm not, I'm not because really like all those experiences, they're not about us. They're mm. about what the other person is yes. doing, you know? And like, can we let go of that story and choose to really come into partnership for what it's there for, which is to love each other open, to heal the deep shit? Because we all have it. We all have stuff with our parents, authority figures, like our formative years have fucked all of us. Mm. No matter if you have amazing parents or not, there's something in our way. It's like by design so that we have this transformational experience of really choosing to, to be the creators of our experience. Mm. So it's, it, it's like, we need to do it through love and let go of the story that's keeping us separate because mm. we don't want separation. We want connection. Mm. Johan, were you on a spiritual journey at this time? Like, were you open to healing and therapy and things like that? Yes. Um, I, I got on a, on a spiritual journey at a very young age of 14. And also for a long time, it was very much a heady journey. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was this traditional sort of how I interpreted it, I should say, traditional Eastern philosophy, you know, feelings are kind of stupid, humanity, you know, th this whole thing is like just Maya and illusion. And so I was like, oh, I'm just going to be above it. I'm just going to observe it all and, you know, mm -hmm. and not give any credence to my feelings. And so I completely, again, by design, cut myself off from my heart and feelings and made up a story that they're dumb. And then, uh, you know, big mistake, uh, obviously beautiful learning. And then at the age of 29, I was in therapy. I was in acting class. And um, I also had a girlfriend. Finally, he was like not putting up with any of my bullshit. So it was like a trifecta. Um, my therapist was a woman. My acting teacher was a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and really like the trifecta of that helped me begin to crack the facade and the belief systems. And then by the time Rachel came along, I was certainly way more open to not always needing to be right. It's through my first divorce uh, at 33, where I really saw, it was like a full death portal where I saw my life flash in front of my eyes. And my therapist was actually there for it as well. My, my best friend, Paul. And, um, I could really see how I was using these spiritual terms and th these philosophies as a way to, uh, justify blaming and mm -hmm. not taking responsibility. And it was so profound and so big. And so when Rachel came along, I was definitely seeking partnership yeah. and ready to not just do these like shallow little dives into the pool, but really like dive in, you know? And I was for a long time in our beginning part of the relationship, really like looking for drama. I was like, where's the drama at? You know, I was <laughs> bored. I was like, this is so vanilla. And, and, <laughs> And, uh, and so I found there was always, I would always find something wrong. Like there's always something that I could focus on, you know, that wasn't in me, but rather in her, <laughs> um, that was off, you know, and through this, I want to fast forward in time now that, you know, what we teach and what we're, we're, we're doing our first teacher training in the pyramid breath method through this experience was was birth a new type of a practice yeah. that isn't this static practice uh it's a traditional type of a practice but is very much you know expressed and alive and tantric and embodied Wild, and, you know yeah. and and again to me as a, as a very masculine eastern european man that would have been just like huh <laughs> yeah never and now to daily be in that embodiment of, of, of cultivating the connection between the masculine, the feminine, and then realizing how much bigger it makes both sides, how much more of a man, a masculine man, I've become a trustable man, I've become because of it. And, and again, for me, having that realization that divine is feminine and all of the expression that I see around me is the feminine expression of the divine. It, it completely changed my relationship to the feminine mm. because before the feminine was just like the 
the messy, uh, you know, unpredictable, manipulative. That's the story that I've made up. That's the program you were running. Yeah. And, and, been and, conditioned and now into. like the feminine is this beautiful divine expression of aliveness. Mm. And so completely different way of relating to the feminine within myself, right? All the stories I have around my own feelings and aliveness and then outside as well. I ask that because a lot of questions I get from people are, my partner's not on a spiritual journey. He's not willing to go to therapy. He's not willing, you know, I, I say these terms to him, he won't listen. So what would you suggest for someone like that who, you know, I think a lot of women we try to initiate, but you can only take someone as far as they want to take themselves. Would you suggest then leaving if that person's not open or you can be in a relationship with someone who's just, maybe this lifetime for them is not about self-awareness? You know, I think that it's like two parts. One is if you are desiring your partner to take a journey, take it first and be the embodied reflection of that. So when you are, when you are having these visceral shifts and changes, they get curious and want to, and, and without like nagging or being like, you need to do this, but inviting them into that. And then, you know, to be completely honest, if they don't want to go down that journey and that's what you're wanting, it's likely not the right person for you because really for, for Johan and I, like the basis, the foundation of our relationship is our practice. Mm. We've been doing that from the first moment that we met and it is our emotional touchstone through literally everything. Yeah. And we are so devoted to expansion. And that's what keeps it so exciting and mm. so passion filled and so exhilarating. Mm. It is never boring. I've never been bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say that um, there are, luckily there are so many different ways to explore that. You know, if one way, if you're like, hey, my partner doesn't want to do yoga with me or go to therapy, maybe they would be interested in doing a ketamine journey or yeah. ketamine therapy or, or, breath maybe, work. or a breath work, like something, you know, transformational breath work or or uh, transcendental meditation yeah, or, or, like, you know, or maybe they're willing to get into an ice bath or maybe they're willing to, um, you know, try a pyramid breath or maybe they're willing to go to Hoffman process. Yeah. And so there's a lot of different, uh, oftentimes we don't know of all the options out there. And be, so if we, ch if we're like, we found this one way, I want you to do this one way and that doesn't work. And we get this heart and versus getting really curious about, is there something if our, that our partner might be more open to. Yeah. And then giving all of those options a go and seeing maybe, you know, taking them to an ecstatic dance or taking them to a yin yoga class or taking them to, you know, watching a documentary together or reading a book together, or, you know, is there some, what's the avenue that gives them the impetus to begin to open and to question? And if you've tried those things and it's not there, I think you either have to go like, I accept you as you are and I accept that this is what my life will be like so I can live without resentment. Or you go like, thank you so much for this experience. It's time for me to find somebody who is in, in alignment with what we desire because we have the same goals, yeah, the same desires. Same values. We want the same things yeah. in the world. And, you know, we have areas that we need to work on or, and work on. However, what we desire out of life is the same. And yeah. because of it, we're constantly driving towards that with like glee and joy, Yes, you know, and excitement. And we, we read books together at the same time, you know, or listen to books and, and like, we're constantly like, Oh my God, you got to do this thing and this and this. And so we're constantly experimenting together. So it never gets stale ever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as, as you share this, you know, in my, in my previous marriage, we did not have the same values. We did not have, I would, sometimes we would have conversations like, what does your ideal life look like? I'm like, I don't know. I'd live in like Bali or Costa Rica in the jungle with a waterfall and there's community and there's drumming and there's dancing. And like, that's how I see my life. And he's like, I'd love to live in like Ibiza and go to trance clubs every night. And, you know, like in the underground house scene, and I'm like, that is so not my reality. But in my mind, I'm like, well, I guess we'll have to find a middle ground. That's not your ideal reality. It's not my ideal reality. We'll have to find, you know, maybe it's the North part of Ibiza. Yeah. <laughs> yes. like that. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's a beauty to compromise. Absolutely. Right? Of like, yeah. it's not always going to be exactly what you want, but I'm, it's almost like God was like, stop playing small. 
It's like, if this is what you really want and this partnership will not allow you to have that, then it's like, what are you going to choose? Yes. You know, being like in this kind of met relationship and not having your dharma and your soul's fullest expression or to lose this connection and be grateful for it, but now have the freedom to live your soul's fullest expression. The fear that shows up in me, and I know probably people listening too, is like, well, what if I never find that person who wants the same, who also wants to do the Bali dancing thing? And, or oftentimes it's like, that's so feminine. So only like a really feminine guy would want to do that. I mean, if you guys have been to Ubud Bali. No, not yet. Not the best for dating. (laughs) I'm sure there's great people there too. But so do you believe that there is, I'm curious your take on soulmates, twin flames. Do you believe there is like this one person out there for you or several people out there for you, or it's always just a choice and an inevitable dance of compromise? I think it's, it's sort of like a mixture. And I, I, so I love this, this inquiry because I think it's so present and there's this like scarcity mindset that we carry around with dating. Like I'm going to settle because I'm never going to find anything else. And I think that, you know, for those of us who are listening to this, you're obviously in the work you're, you're choosing this. And I, for us both, like continuously using your, your consciousness to serve you versus enslave you, right? There are 8 billion people in the world, right? It, the more that you step into who you are, the more that you magnetize someone towards that. Now, mm. it might not be exactly what you think. And I love that you express that because I believe so deeply in compromising and compromising can be such like, kind of like a dirty word. You're like, I'm never going to, there is that like, I'm not compromising myself. Someone's right. just got to meet me, but it's not compromise in a like a lower vibration. It is you are creating something brand new with another human. And the thing that we have found together is otherworldly. Now, I love to ecstatic dance. Johan is not, he's not the most ecstatic dancer, but I get my fix on my own. It's what I teach. You know, I do it with my women. Like there are all these different ways that we can find that really meet ourselves. Do I believe that Johan and I are have done this before in many lifetimes? Absolutely. We've done past life regressions. I've seen it. I felt it. I I love this human so much. And I also believe that if anything were to happen, that we would find other people. Mm. Like that I, I believe that because it empowers me. Mm -hmm. And it keeps me trusting life and it keeps Mm -hmm. me meeting life versus having sort of like a fatalistic, if I miss my person, I'm missing it forever. You are always going to get what's meant for you, you know, and really like inviting people to keep discovering who it is that they are and how they want Mm -hmm. to be met and, and asking the universe to show it to you. Yeah. I would, I would say that, um, it's definitely a choice, right? Everything is a choice and, and, and I believe that the more that we immerse ourselves in these practices yeah. that are really change our, our, our resonance, um, the more likely you are to attract, mm-hmm. quote unquote, magically your tribe, those people, and you find yourself in places in different parts of the world where magically that other person or people are also attracted to, and you know, and. Rachel and I aren't each other's type. Mm-mm. So when we first met, we you were- You guys look alike. I know. <laughs> uh, we, 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 yeah, so we're not- No, for no us, you're mixed. You're half yeah. black, which mm-hmm. is crazy because you don't look and you're Eastern European. Yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we, yeah. The, we're, we're each other's type now. Like we were yeah. obsessed with each other, yeah. but in the beginning, <laughs> that wasn't the case. At and, all. But there was this under- Yeah. So if you guys were on a dating app, you would have missed each other because very, you're only going for your type on these apps. Very, Probably. very likely. Yeah. And we were both like sort of, I remember the moment that I first saw him, I was like, this guy is so not my type, but I was like in my, you know, I just got into LA. I was like, I'm just going to date everybody. (laughs) And then when I saw him and he didn't, he didn't like, I couldn't get his attention energetically and I liked it. I was like, Hmm, this is a hard one. Let me go deeper into this. And it was like, it was energy that was Mm. the thing, which so yes, I agree with that. We get too trapped in what we think we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have these ideas of, you know, what my partner is going to look like, what they're going to do. They're going to be, you know, they have read these books and done these practices. So you guys didn't write lists or anything. I, 
I am a deep advocate of the list, but my list is very different. It's a feeling, Mm -hmm. how you want to feel with the person versus Mm -hmm. what you're like, oh, I want someone who's, who's rich. Cause a lot of women have that. And there's, it's very different someone who's rich versus someone who is ambitious and who's has a willingness to constantly grow. You can lose money in an instant. Right. And also, you know, with that, it's like someone who's in integrity. Yes. Right? And what we have found, like we've both gone through these iterations of ourselves in our career and what we're creating now and co-create co-creating now, it feels like for the first time in our lives, we're actually doing the thing that we're put on this earth to do. And we would and, have never known that in the beginning. Yeah. It's, and, your, it's your dharma together. Yes, and, exactly. And really the city, the, the highest form of relationship is when it can be dharmic. Yeah. yeah. And that's what it feels like. And so that's what I would say to the you know folks out there that are, are listening is like, yeah. it may, it, the iterations of yourselves and the other that when you first meet, who you get to become yes. is what you're looking forward to versus again, if someone's static and you know, someone's like, I'm a grown up and this is, I've stopped learning. I yeah. am now this person. Move on. Yeah. And if there's a willingness there to, to question, to explore, to be in discovery, please stay. Mm. Because there's so much. Like once you get into the habit of it and you get get to go th- through a few like, you know, mini deaths into rebirths, you're like, wow. That's this what creates incredible. trust and intimacy. Yeah. And I think to what you said before, like the dating world with the apps and and with what's happening on Instagram and like the amount of, from my perspective, noise that's out there, that's really- like, Righteousness. That's really like detrimental to people's hearts because you're not in exploration. Like love is unexplainable and it is a journey that is so magical. And it involves like, you know, there's that quote that's like, being with someone long term is like going to that person, like a thousand funerals. Yes. It is that, and and that's why it's so fulfilling and what keeps you sustained and what keeps the the passion alive. But we're so stuck as a society on attracting our perfect partner. And what you're really saying, from my perspective, when you're like, oh well, I met this guy, and no, he's not it. You're base. You're you're. What if you're not perfect yet? What is that saying about you? How are you holding yourself in that? It's like, where can we be in a growth mindset forever? Be in discovery forever. Let love evolve forever. That's what consciousness is. It is meant to evolve and expand. Mm. That's what relationship does. And when we do that and we allow it, it is like this really juicy, incredible ride that will make that honeymoon phase that happens in the beginning last your entire relationship. And I think looking like what I've shifted energetically within myself is instead of looking for qualities about that person, looking for qualities of your shared relationship, Mm. right? So for example, I'm very creative and artistic. So my type has always been musicians because they're creative and artistic people, but it's like, well, what if they're not a musician, but our dynamic is creative and artistic. We create art together. We, and it's maybe an interest or a hobby of theirs, but it's not what they do with their entire career. Cause it's like, ultimately we're attracted to the things that we want to embody and we can look at each of those people as a muse of an energy that we are wanting to step into. So I'm like, okay, how am I not totally evoking my inner musician? Okay, let me sign up for music production classes. Let me just focus more on my DJing. Let me do more of these things. And then you witness the people that you're attracted to shifts because you're no longer needing that fix from something outside of you. And then you're witnessing, okay, what is my next area of growth? Look at who you're attracted to right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, like, Johan and I are very, very different. You know, we have the same values and and the same like desires, but we are very different human beings. And and that's what makes it interesting. You know, it's like we, I believe that we want to be challenged, right? Because that's what keeps us growing. And it's like, if, you know, people are always like, well, I just want like, you know, they'll say to my best, your best friend, like, I want someone who's just like you. I'm like, well, you don't have sex. Like there's all these different factors. It's like, let go of, of the idea completely and, and just be willing to follow the energy of your body, right? Beyond your eyes, close your eyes. What does it feel like to be, you know, when we first met and we would hug, it was like, 
whoa, the hugs were something I'd never experienced before. And that's what from kept the very me beginning. From the very yeah. beginning. Okay, so here's my question for you. So a lot of people say that the relationships that last the most long term often don't have a spark or a connection at the beginning because that spark can be trauma bonding. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, how, why would you keep going on a date with someone that you don't feel a connection towards? I just I wouldn't do that. Yeah. So I'm curious your take on it because it seems like you guys did have that attraction, even though it, it wasn't. No, no, yeah. it, it okay. was it was <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was a spiritual connection, yeah. and it was an energetic connection, home connection. Yeah, it felt very, very good. I was like, I think we're maybe so just because she was also dating a friend of mine when we first met. It's like I think we're just supposed to be friends because this connection is unreal. Were you guys physically attracted to each other? I think that like obviously he's attractive. I'm attractive. Like I was like, oh, interesting. But again, not typical. There wasn't this. There was no you trauma. Like bonding. flirting from the beginning. We were definitely flirting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We were, we were, we were flirty, but uh, you know, we're kind of flirty with everybody. Yeah, it's true. So it was more like <laughs> mm, playing this fun game. And we were there was yeah there was like a, a rapport that was like exciting and exhilarating, and he we met each other, but it was not um, this like chemical chemistry. Yeah, like, like I need to <sighs> fuck you no. right now. I need to like rip your clothes off. No. Like yeah, you know, and that's something that we actually struggled with for many yeah. many years. Mm -hmm. So do you think that feeling of like you meet someone's that instant connection, that's trauma bonding? Usually. A lot of times. And I think that there's an element. I remember the first night I met my ex, met my husband. It was like, then I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're used to the movies and things yeah. like that of like, you just, when you know, you know, love at first sight. And I, I, I said it on our yeah, first day. You did. Yeah. To my friend when Rachel went to the bathroom, I think I just met my wife. Mm -hmm. And... It's because it was it's, different. It was because we met at a meditation retreat yeah. and, and the, 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 the energy was so palpable and powerful and we didn't have sex for the, like oh. at least a month yeah. of, of and being seeing together. each other every single day. Yeah. And, and the sex was all right. Yeah. You know, for, again, it was all right for many years. It wasn't mind blowing yeah. for many years. Now it's mind blowing, Yeah. which again is like, we're 10 years in. You know, and it still gets better and better. We just had one of our biggest breakthroughs like four days ago yeah. where we had that really uncomfortable conversation, how we each didn't feel like we were being met. Yeah. Well, no, because that let's, because this is good. And I think this is important in relationship is like, we had this beautiful conversation around sexuality. And the thing that I said that I think was really pivotal was like, I'm not, not satisfied. I am satisfied and I still want more. And that is a lot of couples grapple with that. That's called not satisfied, by the way. No, it's not, baby. Don't do that because well, it's- satisfied is satisfied. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we can still like, it's not like I'm not on, like we had amazing sex before this and something sparked, ooh, but, and could we get more? And that I think is really important to continue to have mm -hmm. that conversation because then it opened up this whole avenue that was like, holy smoke -aronies. And it was amazing. And people miss that. It's like, you get together, you're like, great, I'm safe. I'm the wife, you're the husband or whatever it is, whatever mm. gender you're playing. You're you're like, I'm just gonna chill now. We're in our safe zone. And we it's stop so easy having to, the conversations. It's so easy to get into a pattern, yeah. you know, when you're with somebody for a long time, you know, okay, sex looks like this. We're gonna, you know, take yeah. the clothes off and then this happens and then step two and the step three. The things that get you off, the things that yeah. get me off. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, and you, and then Go for- Go off to the next task. Exactly. And for a while, that's really fun. And yeah. then when you do it a hundred times yeah. the same way, you're like, uh, mm -hmm. the next hundred are gonna look exactly the same mm -hmm. and it's gonna get less and less exciting. And so what we've discovered is to have those conversations. And, you know, this one also was sparked with us actually- again, beginning to be a little bit more playful mm -hmm. outside of our container, mm -hmm. right? And then, but this time around, like not being confused about it. And being it. in complete integrity yes. and with trust and safety. Yes, yeah. and and then exploring and then having that third energy for using the SRPRL terms here uh, to really be enlivening for us. Yeah. And then finding that, you know, oftentimes, even if there does sparks a conversation, like what is lacking or what could it, could we add in that's not there right now? And that's what happened for us is then having that sex where we we're both like, that's the best sex we ever we're had. Like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> like just so blown away, you know, and just being like, did that, that just, yeah, that just happened. 
And, um, and that was with the third energy. No, after. no, no. no, 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 no. After, after, after the conversation, yeah. after we've been in a, like a playful space. And yeah, like a very like sweet, playful, like safe, very yeah. like a uh, um, PG uh, experience. <laughs> well, um, I would not call that PG, my love. I would say it was PG. P maybe PG 13. <laughs> Um, okay. You would let a 13 year old into that room? No. Exactly. You're, you're making shit up right now. Honey. Okay. Okay. That was she just has more depth. 18, yeah. 18, exactly. 18, 18, 18 plus. I was getting started. Yeah. That was just 18 like, plus. that was PG for Rachel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it. Um, so, so to say, you know, there's so many opportunities to explore aliveness and really convert the aliveness to be in service to you versus enslave you, like Rachel mm -hmm. likes to say, because our live, liveness is going to keep coming. Mm -hmm. Like it's not going keep away. Coming. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. It's inspiring that you're like, yeah, our first few years of sex were, you know, okay, but it was, you know, now we're having the best sex in 10 years in because you always hear the opposite. Yeah. You always hear the first few years were amazing, but now we're 10 years in. So it just shows that the more communication you have, the more honesty, the more opening you have, the sex gets better. It's yes. not that these things dilute and make a relationship boring and too real, Yes, but it's actually, that is what creates like your true fantasy and making it happen rather than like playing a role that neither of you guys, like, I wonder with these one night stands, it's like, you guys have never really met or talked. Like, is that really satisfying for either parties? I, again, unless there's some trauma bonding involved, then maybe. So I think it's so beautiful that you guys are just like living embodiments of this because, you know, a lot of people talk about relationships and it's one thing to talk about in theory. Yeah. It's another thing to be living it in today's world yeah. with the social media, with the distractions, with the, you know, confusion of gender roles and just all of the dynamics and conversations. And you guys are really aware of all of them too. I mean, I've spoken to you guys off air for many, many hours about the things and you guys are both so open, but like also so romantic. Mm. And it's beautiful to Thank have you. that, that, cause it's like, sometimes you get so open that yeah. it's almost like there's no more polarity or, or really a relationship anymore. Right. But it's like, you guys are like, I love you so much. And I'm obsessed with you and like have that cuteness. And you're like, Oh, but we're just getting started. Yes. Oh yeah. That's what it really feels like is that we're just getting we're started. Just, like, like just scratch the surface yeah, of how amazing it you know, really can be. And by the way, that's our daily prayer. Yeah. Yeah. That is what we speak out loud every single day. And we do our gratitude prayer and practice is, is that, and you know, I, I so powerfully believe that we create our reality yeah. by our words, all, by yeah. our intentions, with our energy. And so this is our creation. Yeah. And you know, there's so often we find ourselves in a place in a world having an experience and being like, didn't we just Say speak this. this into existence like three months ago when we're taking a walk and we're like, yeah, we did. And you, you know, know, I think that to what you said, I think that's so beautiful because there's this misconception that when you're getting into a relationship, if you really like, say all the things that there's no more mystery. And I think that yeah. blocks us from going deeper when I believe the truth is the deeper you go, the deeper it becomes. And there is this never ending portal. And when you start to continuously reveal your desires, you discover new desires, right? And, and how to, I think one of the most important things in relationship is creating safe spaces for everything to be said, right? To, to express like your worries, your apprehension, your resentment, your desires, your needs, your wants. And for that conversation to not like be a blow up, right? But to, for everything to be there, because then to what you said, the, the, you sort of switch the roles and it just gets better and better and deeper and deeper because the more intimacy you create, then like, you know, the deeper you get into your erotic themes and you're, you know, through that, you're like, oh, I didn't even know that I desired this, but because there's so, so much trust and safety, you discover something that you would have never discovered. So it's like you really stop playing a character. Exactly. And yeah. you really are able to be who you are moment to moment, moment which is forever moment, yeah. changing. And so you don't need to hold on to this idea. I'm, I'm this mysterious. I'm going to show you a part of me yeah. or I'm this dude, that's this. And you know, it's so, again, a static idea of who you think yeah. that thing is or that they want. Yeah. And, and versus together being in discovery of who you get to become moment to moment, mm -hmm. which is forever interesting. Yeah. 
Ah, so beautiful. Well, thank you both for being walking examples of this, of love, embodiments of love. And I love following both of you separately with your pyramid breath work that you're doing. Guys, he does the most amazing breath work. He has a certification. So I'll link his Instagram below. And Rachel does incredible wild woman ecstatic dances. And can you talk about your shared Dharma, the project that you guys are co-creating? Yeah. I mean, to everything we expressed, you know, we really want to impart on anyone who is willing that, that this was tools. Like we, we're not just perfect. We're not just, we found our soulmate. Like we, we, there are tools and there are skills. And like, you know, one of my angel, one of our best friends, she said like after newness and novelty comes skill and devotion and really wanting to teach people these things that none of us, you know, are taught when we're little and really taking couples and sort of busting the myths that anyone we work with, it's just needing like, it's okay to go moments without having sex. It's totally normal. And so bringing people into containers and doing like deeper relationship mastery where we get intimate and we hold space for you to really open mm. yourselves in partnership so that you can experience the passionate, deep, intimate love that you truly desire. Yeah, so our, our couples container is coming up. And another container that we're so yeah, excited yeah. about is a men's container that we're both, both gonna teaching. be leading. Yeah. So it's not gonna be like me just holding a men's container, right? This is really the dudes are gonna get the the embodiment of what it means to be in a relationship. Mm. Um and um and get the I think feminine it's so, perspective. I think it's so rare, yeah, to create a safe space where both masculine and feminine perspectives are present. Mm. And we're really seeing the value of, of that and the, the the need for that in the world right now, because mm -hmm. otherwise it's so polarized and we're in these narratives and stories and, and it's, it's, it's through the togetherness of, for, for of us that we have discovered. We, I literally was saying that on the way here is like, we make each other the best versions yeah. of each other. We bring out the best in each other. Mm -hmm. And it's through the process that we've gone through that yeah. we are able to, to hold that and mm -hmm. live that. And it's so beautiful knowing that there are tools and it's a skill set and requires practice because then you're not in the space of waiting and like, oh, I hope I find my Johan and I hope I find my Rachel. But it's like, okay, let me use this time of being single to look at my blind spots and to go inwards and to up level myself, which is going to cause me to be attracted to different people, be in different circles and show up in different ways. Yes. So it's such a beautiful place to devote yourself, not just when you're single and then also while you're in partnership too. So your only learning container isn't that other person, but you're bringing yeah. new tools into the relationship, which keeps that spark going as well. Absolutely. Mm. Yay. Well, thank you guys thank mm. you so, so much, much for being here today and for sharing so space much. with us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. It's such a mm. pleasure. We love you so Sending much. Sending you so much love, everybody. Mm. <laughs> Oh my goddess, I am on cloud nine after that conversation. It is conversations like this that I do the podcast for. You know, these types of discussions that open our hearts and just pull open the lid of the car of all of our suppressed feelings and unmet expectations and these shifts that we're experiencing as a collective, but we're not talking about. We need to bring this at the forefront. We want to be in relationship. We want to be in love. We want companionship and unionship, but that doesn't just happen to us. It's something that we actively co-create. So I hope you took so much out of that episode. It's definitely one I'm going to listen to again and again, because there are so many different angles that if you really take that in and apply it into your life, it is going to change the game for you. And not just the game, you know, it's the, it's the life, it's the expansion, it's what's possible for us through this beautiful, unifying energy of love. So thank you so much for tuning in. Share this episode on social media, share it with your friends, share it with those in a marriage, in a heartbreak, anywhere in between. And if you loved this episode, I would love for you to leave a review for it on the iTunes store. And as a free gift, I will share with you my womb meditation. So this is a little eight minute meditation practice that you can do to connect to your womb's energy and actually ask her questions and receive her answers. So all you got to do is head over to the iTunes store, the Apple store, where you're listening to your podcasts and leave a review. Take a screenshot of that review and email it over to me at sahara at iamsahararose.com. You can find that email in the show notes and I'll send you back my womb meditation. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to receive the next one. And I can't wait to keep the discussion going. Namaste. Namaste.